20 questions or 20 minutes, whichever comes first, as long as it's you. This is You Go First. I'm your host, Blair Payton. We have 20 questions in a vase. My guests will draw the first question and we'll go back and forth covering as much ground in 20 minutes. The timer begins after the first question is read. My guest today is a beauty and lifestyle expert, producer, on-camera host, and founder of the YouTube channels Mix Makeup and Fam for All Moms. Most recently, she debuted her skincare line, Naturium, in Target stores across the U.S. Please help me welcome, by sharing this podcast with your friends, Susan Yara. Woohoo! Thanks for having me. That was like the best uh, best intro I've had since... Uh, <laughs> pandemic started oh my goodness hair flip well i just went to your website so (laughs) so if anything you're complimenting yourself and on your writing skills also said very well though the presentation was great okay you know what i'll take it so how are you 2021 has to be a pretty good year for you because you just launched the skincare line well, you know, 2021, i'm i'm very cautiously optimistic i'm like tiptoeing into 2021 you know, I think we all are just because, you know, we learned that 2020, you know, proved that we can have some pretty shitty years. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was definitely a fun year. I will say the one thing I took away from 2020, it was a year of reflection. Yes. No doubt about that. I mean, for everybody, myself included. So let's talk about Naturium. Now, I will say this you had talked about it on your podcast, Fam. And well, No, let me backtrack. The way I was introduced to Naturium is so I produced your podcast, fam, and you were talking about the importance of retinol. And I'm like low key a skin enthusiast. I know you are. And I can see it by your glowing skin also. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, So I was like, you know what? I'm getting I'm getting up in age. I I need to fight decay. So I went to Walgreens and I bought like Olay retinol and I sent you a message. I was like, hey, just want to let you know I'm following your advice. And you're like, oh, my God, this warms my heart. So you sent me Naturium. Yes, I did. And you sneaky bitch. (laughs) I like this is not a commercial hand to God. Like I do love this stuff. Like I have it right here. I just bought some new face wash. Like I am my roommates obsessed like, t- tell me about Naturium. So Naturium is, you know, it's kind of what I saw missing from the market. Mm-hmm. I, I think that, you know, we can we can all agree that there are a ton of skincare brands out there now, and it's really hard to decide which ones you're supposed to go for. But there was this little space in the market that I saw missing, and that was, you know, basically what we want from these luxury brands or like these medical grade brands, but at a more affordable price. Products that feel like they're a treat, and not just so, um, you know, utilitarian, which is not a bad thing, right? Mm. Like we have those products too, but at the same time, there, there's that part of us that all want, you, we all want to treat ourselves, right? But we want to have, we want to have something that we can afford on a regular basis too. You know, I thought there had to be something out there that we could do because, you know, we have these affordable brands too, but they don't always feel nice and they don't always like, they don't always perform the, the way that we want them to perform. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like there had to be some something that kind of met that, right? That was in the middle, you know? And that's what Naturium truly is. It's not, it's not anything that's super, you know, different on the market and stuff. It's just these are products that work, really nice formulations and ingredients that also feel really good. And they also happen to be at a more accessible price. And that's also why we chose Target as one of our first retail partners was because it's so smart because I will just go in target when I need absolutely nothing. (laughs) All of us. That's all of us. (laughs) I mean, that's how like, if I'm having a stressful day, I go to target and I'll come out of there with like, I don't know, just a dumb T I'm, I'm a fan for a dumb t-shirt and skincare stuff. Same. That's, I mean, that's why you and I are friends. (laughs) (laughs) So as someone who is like with this company and you helped uh, get it to the market and everything, I-, I always wonder, specifically someone like you, when you talk about the skincare products, are you in the lab? Like, how does that like work? No, and the pandemic has completely changed that because there used to be a time when you would be able to go to the lab, mm-hmm. right? And actually see the products being made and formulated, especially if you run into like, it's always, this is like in every industry, right? The minute something like isn't working, that's when you want to see the process, right? That used to be a thing. Now with the pandemic, it's not as much of a thing, right? 
unless you're a chemist, which I am not a chemist at all, uh, you are not formulating it if you're a brand founder. That doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean you're you're actually formulating. We hire different chemists and different labs to work with us on these formulations. So I'm kind of like the ideas person. I know what it is that people are looking for. I know what I have in my head of what I like after trying thousands and thousands and thousands of skincare and beauty products over the past two decades. It's like, I have a very clear idea of the things that I'm looking for. That doesn't mean that they always work out. Right. And this, this is something if, that I'm actually learning as mm-hmm. we go, you know, I have these ideas of like, Oh, let's put these ingredients together in a bottle. Right. And when you actually present that to a chemist, they might not, they they'll like give you what they they'll like translate it right to what you, you told them you wanted. And it's not always exactly what you wanted, right? Like it doesn't turn out, it could be sticky or maybe it like separates and stuff. So it's a, it's definitely a process. And so I'm working with different chemists and also we have a product development team. Um, and they're essentially like the liaisons between like me and the, um, the chemists in the labs, right? So, you know, like the labs, they speak like all the science talk, right? They're like very straightforward. They don't want to hear any of like my, like grand ideas, right? Right. Like this filter between us, that's the product development team. And they walk both worlds, kind of like translating what they heard from me. And they're like, okay, this is what Susan wants, right? <laughs> but we also know, <laughs> because she is not a formulator, that this doesn't always work out. And I, I, I'll say, like, I, I'm, like, joking about it. I, I'm pretty good about knowing, like, the limitations and stuff of what can be done in a lab. Mm-hmm. But I do love to, I love this creative process, right, to be able to say, like, this is what I would dream of having. Like, we have a product launching in March that I have been dreaming about. Like, I've wanted this product. Can you say what it is? Well, it's so well. It it's it has to do with azelaic acid, right? Which is I don't know what that means. It's an amazing ingredient that I think. Dumb it down for me. Dumb it down. It's this. It's this ingredient. It's a powerhouse ingredient. These are like marketing terms. It's this okay. ingredient that does so many different things for so many different skin types. Um, it helps with uh, any kind of redness in your skin, even people that have like rosacea and sensitive skin. Um, it helps to like decongest all of your pores and stuff. So if you have blackheads, if you get occasional breakouts. Um, if you, uh, you know, you just want to make your skin glow and look overall really pretty, you want to help like with discoloration and stuff. So what I'm hearing is if I get this, it'll make me weeks younger looking, right? Potentially. No. Okay. <laughs> so we never want to say that to anybody because like nothing can really make you look younger besides, you know, like just overall taking care of yourself, but you know, it can definitely make you look glowy and bright and prettier and you know just all the things that we want to to hopefully accomplish there's only so much skincare can do and I don't ever want to over promise but you know when I was I spent like almost four years of my life pregnant or breastfeeding as you know with like fam we talked about this stuff I think it's truly like when you become pregnant for the very first time you don't realize like you know but you don't know just how your body and your skin and your hair and everything is going to change like you know you're going to gain weight right but there's also like your skin and your hormones completely change you start experiencing issues you've never experienced before there are so many things that you're now being told that you can't eat that you can't put on your skin that you can't like expose yourself to the like they scare the shit out of you. So basically what you're saying is you looked like a goblin during your first pregnancy. (laughs) You definitely feel like you look like a goblin. (laughs) And on top of it, you can't use anything that would help you from looking like, like stop the whole goblin process. Right. (laughs) Right. So, so, you know, I've had this on the, in the back of my mind for years. And, uh, and so, you know, it's fun to be able to translate that with a, with a lab and be able to get this finished product to present to the world and see how it does. Well, definitely what you have to do as an influencer, you have to do this, whether you're doing it or not, you have to go to the lab, put on the attire, and then like pose like real cute, like "Mm, testing some new product, hashtag blast. Exactly. And I have to tag like the designer, right? Exactly. See, you get it. Actually, I'll probably create a TikTok post and I'll dance in it and I'll tell everybody all the ingredients that are in this product and the process that we went through. Are you talking about the ones where you point? Yes. Like that I hate I hate those so much. They're so uncomfortable to watch. So one thing I wanted to ask you, so part of mixed makeup, which I learned this out recently, is a, a whole production company. Part of mixed makeup is you review brands. Yep. Have you ever gone in on a product and been like, this is garbage? 
Oh, no, no. Here's the thing. Beauty is mm -hmm. very personal. And so from day one, I pretty much had a rule, even with my team and stuff, that we're not going to completely trash a brand unless it truly is garbage. Like this brand, it would like purposely like harmed people or something like that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, beauty is so personal. So what works for me might not work for somebody else on my team, right? And that goes just in general. Something mm -hmm. that works for me might not work for you. And as each brand starts to create more and more products, they're not always creating a product for you specifically, right? They're creating products for specific people. So even on my brand, in my brand, there are products I don't use regularly because they're not made for me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a person with dry skin. I, like I said, spent four years of my life pregnant and breastfeeding. So there were ingredients like retinol I couldn't use for a while there. Um, you know, they're just products that are not made for me, period. And that's okay, right? So if I if I know a product isn't made for me, I, it doesn't mean that it, I should trash this brand then, right? Everybody is kind of, it's all very, very personal. And so you never know what's happening behind the scenes of a brand, all the things that they're trying to do and, you know, to maybe fix or to do right, or like maybe they had the best of intentions and it just wasn't conveyed well and stuff. You just don't know what they're, what they're up to. Right. Mm -hmm. I know that it's easy for everybody to point a finger at like capitalism and, and be like, they're just trying to profit off of you and stuff. But they, but at the end of the day, we don't, we're not sitting in these meetings and we're not talking to these teams and stuff. There are literally people behind each of these brands. Right. You don't know what these conversations are or what's been do what's been going on behind the scenes that may have caused this one issue to happen. Right. So I, I always like leave it up to the brand and there are plenty of people out there who are going to go and trash them anyway. So I don't really need to contribute to it. Now, do you try the products that you know aren't necessarily going to work on you just to kind of give an idea? Yeah. Like I just did a review of a brand called Youth to the People. And one of the, actually like two of the products that I posted in the video that I, that I said were some of my favorites they were not products that are geared towards me, but I, I, after like trying all these products, having my own line and stuff, I, I really, I understand the process that went into making this beautiful product. Right. So even though it's not made for me, mm -hmm. I know it's a good product. And, you know, I, I, I do benefit from having a team, whereas like some influencers don't, they're relying on like their own, you know, trial and error with products and stuff. I can actually like give it to my team and get feedback. And they've been working with me for so long that I, I totally know what they're looking for in a product and they know, you know, like what it is. Yeah. Like we just, we kind of like feed off of each other. We have the synergy now. Mm -hmm. So I hate that word synergy. <laughs> it's fine. You're, you're a big, like, you know, skincare person now. So you have to use those words. Yeah. I have to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur now. <laughs> Exactly. Um, one thing I saw on your Instagram is you were reviewing a video. I think it was Jada Pinkett Smith. Her scare, uh, her skincare routine. Her scare. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was that a Freudian slip there? <laughs> now, whenever you do videos like that, has that particular person ever reached out to you and been like, hey. Oh, yeah. Totally. Did, did Jada? Jada did not. I think Jada does not care whatsoever that anybody, I mean, I think Jada understands how the media works, right? Yeah. Like these videos only help people, right? right. Like it only them it's not like i'm completely like thrashing them and saying that they're terrible people and canceling them right mm -hmm. it's these are videos that are fun they're educational I, I even like state that these are not meant to be you know like take it as your holy grail and this is how it all ends you know <laughs> but you should use it to your advantage so you can get on red table talk how fun would that be i would love to she's amazing she's still making money and she's still absolutely studying you know so it's like this is, you know, this video of, of me, you know, giving a reaction to her skincare routine is so not on her radar, in my opinion. You should still send her some Naturium. Oh, I would love to. I would love to get my products in her hands. And I would hope that she would love them too. Because, you know, it's one of those things. It's like me sending the products to you. I know you're going to love the products if you try them because they are so good. They really are. One question I did uh, want to ask you. You talked about it briefly uh, before in the podcast about retinol. But why, why do you love retinol so much? You know, retinol used to be kind of like a scary ingredient to people. And I think it's because of the lack of information about it. If you talk to somebody who is like truly a skincare enthusiast, they know all about retinol and they sing its praises. But if you talk to somebody outside of skincare, they don't know what it is. It sounds scary. It sounds like it's going to be too harsh on their skin. It sounds like, you know, 
it's like over promising, but it's like going to, they, I think they think their skin is going to peel off. If they start using something like retinol, like it's going mm. to be something really strong. But the thing is, is that retinoids, which is um, the category that retinols fall under, mm -hmm. um, they are the most proven ingredient for anti-aging, right? And when I say anti-aging, that's like this all encompassing word for, you know, like stimulating collagen production, you know, uh, giving you skin cell turnover, that kind of stuff. The things that you actually need to fight the signs of aging. It's truly, it's prescription strength um, retinoids that, so tretinoin essentially, that has the most studies behind it, right? I'm one of those people, again, maybe because I spent four years on and off pregnant and breastfeeding that, and not using it. I'm one of those people that's never been able to just commit to using a prescription because that truly has been too strong for my skin. But I have found that using a really good retinol, which is just an over-the-counter version of a retinoid, um, I've found that it gives me the effects that I need, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe when I'm older and my face is truly, you know, dropping, <laughs> maybe I'm going to be like, no, we need to really go for the big guns here. <laughs> yeah. Not all the stops. But so far, you know, just a retinol has changed my skin and it truly is the one product or, or the one ingredient that I think can really transform somebody's skin. Yeah, it's funny you said that because every time I would hear retinol, I would always associate it with Retin-A, which is what I used to take in high school, which was so harsh on my skin. Like it was flaky and red and I was like, uh, I don't know. But then when I heard you say it, I was like, well, her skin looks great. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it as the gospel. And I did it. I'm glowing in front of you. I love it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a quick break. And coming up, we're going to go through 20 questions in 20 minutes. How are you feeling? Are you feeling confident? Co totally good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now be sure to turn your brain off because these are really dumb questions. <laughs> 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 so we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with Susan Yara on You Go First. Welcome back to You Go First. I am joined today with Susan Yara. And right now we are about to do 20 questions in 20 minutes. So Susan, the way it's going to work, usually we do this in person, but the pandemic has really just, you know, fucked everything up. Yeah, it really has. So the way this will work is uh, just pick a number between 1 and 20. I'll read the corresponding question. We'll try to answer it. Just the first thing that pops into your mind. No need to overthink it. Pick a number between 1 and 20. As soon as you read it, I will start the timer and we will begin. So Susan Yara, you go first. All right. Number seven. What trend are you totally on board with? Timer begins now. Oh, um, wearing sunscreen inside the house. Wait, inside the house? Yeah. While I'm inside, I wear, I wear sunscreen every single day, even right now. Wait, is it just so you get in the the habit of doing it so you don't forget or do you are you getting burnt inside your house? You don't get burnt. See, this is the misconception and that's that you only wear sunscreen so that you don't get burnt. Um, right. And you know, I think there are studies that show that you won't necessarily you're not at like high risk for cancer either, but I am so so into like looking pretty for as long as possible right. that I want to have any chances of wrinkles or UV damage that can cause any kind of hyperpigmentation either. Well, damn. Okay. Cause I just started doing the skin, uh, skin. Um, what is it? Sunscreen. What am I having a stroke? Why can't I talk? <laughs> Sun screen. I just recently started, you know, what's sad. Speaking of that, I used to go to the tanning bed. All of us. I mean, again, back to our age, <laughs> yeah, which is 22. <laughs> we've lived a full life and it's crazy but yeah i used to go there here's the thing in high school i was like i was convinced i would be popular if i got highlights and had a tan and worked out it sounds like you and i were on the same trajectory <laughs> um it didn't pan out that way well here's the thing as far as the working out goes i never did it i would just drink protein shakes and just assume that's how you got a good body I mean, again, same, same. <laughs> <laughs> I think I struggled, still struggle um, a little bit mentally. Um, so as far as me, the current trend I'm on board with, it took me a while. TikTok. Same. I, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm completely on board yet, but yes, I get it. I get it. What was the turning point for you? I mean, well, for a second there, I was like, ooh, look at these like 
thirst traps all over my, my TikTok. And I was like, well, I could watch this for a while. And even my husband would be like, what are you watching? I'd be like, look at this. <laughs> but, uh, but that made me uncomfortable after a while. So I started moving into just funny stuff. I think, you know, it's one of those, it's an app where you can really like veg out and not mm-hmm. think about anything. And I just sit there chuckling. My husband will be like, he'll be like, what are you watching? And I'll stay with him. I'll like look yeah. over and he's chuckling, you know, and it's like, what are you watching? The worst. So right now there's a current trend on there. It's called the silhouette challenge. I'm sure you're familiar. Oh, yes. So so (laughs) last weekend I was I was doing some self tape auditions. And while I was setting up, of course, I was watching TikTok because you, you, you can't not. And so a lot of those kept coming up. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. First of all, to do the challenge, it's work because you have to record yourself in Snapchat with that filter, then download it. And then like, yeah, it's it's a process. I didn't realize. Yeah. The sad part is I did research. I felt really old when I did that. Um, So everybody's researching how to do it. So I filmed myself and I went back and watched it. First of all, when I try to be sexy, it's not sexy. No, same. (laughs) It looks like I'm like trying to do a math problem. <laughs> and I was like, the way I just look, I was like, no, I'm going to just do everyone a favor and not post this. Um, but with that said, yep, TikTok is where it's at. All right, pick another number. Uh, let's go with one. Who's your most unconventional celebrity crush? Ooh, like somebody I want to actually get with or like. Yeah. Let's say your husband's not in the picture. Oh, okay. Keanu Reeves from day one since the Rush Rush Paul Abdul video. And he's always been there. <sighs> See, people, I don't, again, I, I, not to shame you, but like people are always about Keanu Reeves and I just don't see it. I was there from day one. Okay. I was there from the Rush Rush video. <laughs> well, I take that back. In speed, he could get it. But ever since then, I'm just like, uh, he seems nice. Paul Rudd is my second unconventional. He's like a, I would marry him. I wouldn't consider Paul Rudd unconventional. Because he's like, what, 70? And he looks great. He's not 70. I don't know. But he's like, he's up there. But he looks so good. Like, he doesn't age. Again, from like the Clueless movie, that was like the moment I was sprung. And it has never gone away. Which every time I watch that, well, when I was a kid, I would watch that movie. And like when they would kiss at the end, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it. Well, first of all, it's been 20 years or more. (laughs) But like when they would kiss, I was like, this feels wrong. Even though there's no blood relation. He's a stepbrother. But it still felt wrong. I'm with you on that. But it was Paul Rudd, so it was fine. Yeah, I was into it. Um, My most unconventional... I don't know. Like, there's a couple of moments where I look at Steve Carell and I'm like, okay. Steve Carell. You know, have I ever thought about Steve Carell in that way? No. (laughs) I think when he has a beard, I think most guys get better looking, even if they're not attractive, with a beard. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Have you been to Montreal? No. I went to Montreal um, for the first time two years ago in the dead of winter for a friend's bachelorette party. This I feel like it's always the dead of winter there, though. <laughs> and I was like, I couldn't believe that no one had told me how hot the guys were in Montreal. And they're all these like burly mm-hmm. Canadian, French Canadian men. Mm-hmm. And they're all really sweet. And it's that burliness. It's that like the beards. Yeah, like a burly, sweet guy I'm into. Because like, for whatever reason, my dating apps have been pulling guys from Canada. And I'm like, do you, I didn't say I'm going to travel, you know? <laughs> I don't like that. All right, pick another number. Uh, two. Okay, question two. What's the last pic you took with your phone? With my phone? Mm-hmm. Should, should I look? Can I actually have look? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Of my little girl. Oh. Hugging what? my dog. Oh, she's, I thought she was just like had passed out and the dog was just like watching over her. She's always hugging him. She's obsessed with our dog, obsessed with him. And then the the shot before that is her kissing him. I mean, it's just, look how cute they are. Oh, God, I want to get a dog. Um, The last picture I took is my new mask I got. Nice. It has Bernie Sanders on it. Oh, so cute. 
Oh, because of his, is it the meme of him sitting? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. My sister Heather was all over that. She kept digitally inserting him into everything. Like her and her friend would be drinking wine on the couch and she's like, oh my God, Bernie's here. And she ran that into the ground. I think a lot of people ran that into the ground. It was too cute not to. <sighs> all right. Pick another number. Um, Eight. Oh, okay. Now this is kind of a thinking question. So turn your brain back on. Okay. How would you define the word? Success. Oof. I think success has kind of evolved for me, right? I used to think like being the, you know, top, you know, like being ultra wealthy and like running something was going to be like my definition of success. And I think it's changed for me a little bit. And that's, you know, I, I think success to me is being proud of whatever it is that I've put out there now into the world and also just being happy, right? I think it's, I think maybe having kids changed that idea for me a little bit because I found a little bit of a different purpose in life right. after having kids. Um, and I think for me, you know, making sure that they're also healthy and happy has become such a big, you know, folk, like focal point for me right. that really it's like, I want to be proud of what it is I put out there in the world, mm-hmm. um, but also be happy with like the life that I'm living. Right. And I, and I put maybe too much stock into working. I'm one of those people that like, you know, you, I see people posting like, let's normalize not overworking. I'm like, cue the hungry people like me, because I am going to continue to bust my butt until I get. And I've, I've been trying to, you know, like think about that. Where, where is it that I want to be with my career and stuff? And I think it's really, it's, I just want to be happy with what it is out there and how I feel. What's your zodiac sign, by the way? I'm a Leo. Okay, I don't know anything about Leo. <laughs> Leos are in charge. Like we are, like we want to yeah. rule everything. And so, it's, you know, like as I've gotten older, I think I've really tried to. I that I truly was like a Leo through and through my uh-huh. entire life. I wanted to be the center of like the attention and you know make sure that I was commanding every everything. Right, like it was all about me and. I'm running the show and stuff. And now I've kind of taken a step back and been like, and you know, again, the pandemic, right. And self-reflection, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, what do I really want to achieve is especially as I get older and it's, you know, I want to spend time with my kids. I want to make sure they're healthy and happy. I want to make sure I can pay their, their bills if they need it, you know, like in the future and stuff yeah. and feel like not scared about anything that, that involves them, I guess. And so I want to be comfortable. Yeah, same. You said it beautifully. Uh, and I'm a workaholic too. I'm a Capricorn. Ah, Capricorns you guys really get along. I dated a lot of Capricorns growing up. Okay. Is your husband a Capricorn? He's not. He's a, tw- he's a, no, he's not. He's a, he's a cancer. Okay. How's that combination? I only know like little, I'm the type of person who reads horoscopes. And when it's like really a really good horoscope, I'm like, no, oh, this is great. And if it's not, I'm like, no, that's bullshit. Yeah, he's the kind of guy and and this is the cancer in him where he can he actually like can take a step back a little bit and and he kind of helps me flourish, I guess. Yeah. Right? So we we tend to work well together, but he will not stand for any bullshit. Like he's just mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Like you, this is like no bullshit. I will let you do your thing. Be like, you know, all about the attention and everything. Go right. do you while I sit here quietly, right? Yeah. But no bullshit, right? Like, don't BS me. Oh, wow. He sounds great. I love it. Yeah, I love does, it. Does he have a brother who's questioning his sexuality? I'm available. He's now married with, and um, expecting his second child. <sighs> so, yes or no? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I needed, a yes or no? No, no. But if I do know somebody, I will, I will pass them your way. Yeah, send them my way. Okay, uh, pick another number. 10. What weird food combinations do you really enjoy? Mm, I love peanut butter and jelly on my hamburgers. What? Yeah. (laughs) Have you ever had that? So there's a restaurant in my hometown who would make, it was like kind of like a burger specialty shop. And they had a burger there called the Elvis. And it was like, peanut butter and mayonnaise and that seemed gross i'm not like i can kind of get on board with peanut butter but i'm lost at the jelly so there's something like the savory sweet flavor that comes through when you eat a hamburger that's also a peanut butter and jelly sandwich okay 
but it's delicious. It's delicious. Trust me on this. All right. What particular type of jelly? Is it like grape or? It's like grape. It's your old okay. school butter and jelly sandwich with grape jelly on like a ground beef patty. It's delicious. Okay. I'll try it. Mine. No cheese. It's not a cheeseburger. It's a hamburger. Okay. Uh, mine is in, in the peanut butter vein. Okay. The, so I get um, rice cakes and I put something about reduced fat skippy peanut butter is really good. Something about the consistency. I mean, it's like reduced fat by like two grams. So it's not that much healthier, but it's like kind of gritty in a way, which I like. And then I put uh, marshmallow fluff on top. Ooh, that actually sounds delicious. And that doesn't even sound unconventional. Like that sounds delicious. I thought so. But like, I would talk to people about that. And they're like, that seems weird and gross. That sounds like you were on your way to making a health food. Yeah. <laughs> Take yeah. a different turn. And then just took a break. I was like, you know, it's, it's too much. I got overwhelmed. Love, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, it has no cholesterol. There we go. That so works. I went and I drink it with a diet coat. It's all around a healthy meal. All right, pick another number. Um, let's go with 13. All right. Oh, this this should be fun. What posters did you have in your room growing up? Oh, Bon Jovi. Okay. You can walk and Tiffany. Ooh, those are some good ones. Oh, and I had Selena eventually growing up, but that like early stages when posters were truly mm -hmm. a thing. Now, was it when she was like in her prime or was it like the J-Lo is Selena time period? No, it was in her prime. So okay. I grew up, a lot of people don't realize this. I grew up in New Mexico mm -hmm. where it is predominantly Latino and Selena was goddess. Like every young girl growing, like growing up, like from middle school for me, middle school and high school, like I aspired to be Selena. Like singing, dancing, like we were trying to like emulate this. Like she was perfection. And I think the thing that connected a lot of us, like American, like Latinos here in, in the United States with Selena is huh. that she was just like us. Like she didn't, she wasn't like 100% fluid in Spanish, right? Fluent, fluid, fluent. <laughs> she wasn't 100% fluent in Spanish. She was an American girl with the family side of, you know, like the, the Mexican family. So she had the cultural aspect of it, but then she's also this American girl and stuff. And she's trying to like make her way, you know, find her way in mm -hmm. the United States as a Mexican girl, you know? And I, I think it's just, I think a lot of us identified with that. You know, it's, it's a, a little bit different, you know, it's not growing up in Mexico and then coming here. It's, you know, growing up in the United States as an American and mm -hmm. happening, you know, you happen to be, you know, also Mexican. So that like that really connected with, I think, a lot of us and a, a lot of like that southwestern region mm -hmm. of the United States, too, Texas, New Mexico, Cal uh, California, Arizona. I think that really I think she really liked like hit home for us. Now, did you watch the Netflix series? I have not watched it. I've heard from a lot of friends that it's really, it really focuses more on like her brother and like the music industry and that kind of thing. So, you know, it's like, I've watched like anything about Selena. I already know the entire story. So I guess I'm not like, I don't, I'm not chomping at the bit to have to watch the show, but. The only thing I heard about it is that the wigs are not great. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. Well, it's funny because like the posters I had in my room growing up are so um, indicative of where I was in my mind at that age. Because I had I remember I had a Shaquille O'Neal poster in my room because I think I was trying to. Right. Yeah, trying to be straight, which I don't think that's what I was doing. But I, I but I was, if that makes sense. Like I was. Of course, yeah. Like I was trying to be the kid who likes sports when. In reality, I was like, ooh, is Jim and the holograms on? You know, so it was, so it was basically a, a room filled with lies. Oh, I did have a Wayne's World poster. Oh, my God. Wayne's World was the best. Mm -hmm. I, my Twitter handle, a lot of people don't get this because they're younger than me, I guess, in social media. But my Twitter bio says little yellow different. <laughs> It's the Excedrin commercial back in the day. But remember, you know, um, Garth does the little like, like. Commercial. Oh, OK. I'm just so young that I just didn't get that reference, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, you know, it, it's I, I, this is a whole other conversation, but I can't even imagine <laughs> up, um, being gay. Just a, it's crazy to think just like 
a decade, two decades ago, how different it was. And a preacher's kid. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. There's so many levels of this to unpack. I'm a complete mess. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> um, but, you know, to, to like, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine being told that, and it's actually something as a parent that I'm very aware of now from having like my friends growing up and stuff too, who eventually came out as gay and stuff, even though we all knew it, you know, like <laughs> that kind of thing too. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be more, I, I don't want to raise my children genderless, right? I don't mm -hmm. believe that necessarily, but just being aware of like, you know, if, if my child takes to something, then encouraging it, if they don't, yeah on them right because i think that's what the problem was what was so confusing just for everybody right is that yeah. we were always we grew up in a in a time where we were pushed like ideas were pushed on us you know yeah well and like to be fair i didn't really have it as hard as most people did uh i think it was a lot of it was put upon by myself but also there was also that in school i mean it is very much a deeper conversation but no i remember when i came out my dad was um like he he was honestly great through the whole thing but it got to a point where he was so comfortable with it that he would want to like talk in depth with me about it i'm like uh, let's not you know You're like dad's straight or gay i don't want to talk to you about my <laughs> <laughs> well now it's at a new blaze in our life because now he's older and now he's dating since my mom passed so we have that conversation wow so now it's no holds barred Okay, we have 20 seconds. Let's see if we can get through another question. Uh, 14. Uh, 14. Okay, what's one thing you can't live without? Uh, my cell phone, my iPhone. Girl, same. Or Diet Coke. I, it's, too, it's twofold. I have an addiction. All right, we did it. 20 questions in 20 minutes. We didn't get through 20. Uh, I think we got through like six because we just, we just love to gab. <laughs> Fun. It, it means that we like talking. All right. So right now it is your platform. What would you like for people to check out? Everything? One thing? Tell them. Promote it. You know what? Um, find me on Instagram at Susan Yara. And, you know, you'll find all of the things that I talk about and all of my brands and stuff. When I say all of my brands, I mean mixed makeup and, and Naturium. Um, FAM has kind of taken a little bit of a backseat. Maybe when the when things start to go back to normal. It'll have a little bit of a, a resurgence. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking skincare with me. Finally, something I could finally talk about on the show with someone who knows something. Yeah, anytime. Anytime. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in and be sure to rate the podcast five stars. That really helps with promotion and leave a good review. But if you're having a bad day and feeling negative, um, just uh, maybe go complain to Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Send them my way. I can take um but yeah and share the podcast you can follow us on all the apps uh watch on youtube it's a whole immersive experience so again thank you for listening and we will talk to you soon bye